A new and better Super Queen strategy? Say what? Hey guys, this is Andre, and welcome back to another Clash of Clans video. As you can tell, we're on my Town Hall 9, and what we're going to be going over today is a new Super Queen attack strategy. So this new Super Queen attack strategy is going to be super in-depth and it's going to take a lot of time. So hopefully you are sitting down and you have a couple of minutes to spare because we're going to be talking about what spells to use, when to use them, troop combination, what bases to look for, how to use your troops, steps in the strategy, what level queen to have, the extra 30 seconds that you have now post update, these new update changes for super queen with the healers, what to bring in your clan castle, your king's role, what is why it's so versatile, why it's not just a DE strategy anymore, so it's not just for Dark Elixir, you can get gold and regular elixir with this strategy. And we're going to be going over the four different bases that you're going to come in contact with. So we're going to have the DE only one. So you're only going to be going for Dark Elixir if they have like 3.6k or above and they don't have a lot of gold or elixir. Loot in both collectors and storages, loot in storages, and loot in collectors. We're going to have two live attacks and a whole bunch of replays. So let's get this thing started. Alright guys, so let's start out with what spells to bring, your troop combination, and what to bring in your CC. So as you can tell, I have 44 archers, 16 giants, 4 wall breakers, 8 wizards, and 4 healers. Since the new update, healers heal less when you have a certain amount over 4 or 6, I believe. So over 4 or 6, they start decreasing how much they heal because there is a deficiency effect that is in place. So with those troops, you're going to be using them in a specific way. We'll go over that when we actually go through the video uh, with a couple of replays. For your clan castle, I would suggest bringing giants, archers, wizards, golems, P.E.K.K.A. or Valks or anything like that that's going to be really tanky or they can help you out with DPS. For your spells, you're going to want to have one heal spell, two rage spells, one jump spell, and one poison spell. You can take out one of these rage spells or even a healing spell. The healing spell really helps a lot though, but if you're going against a lot of Town Hall 10s, which I sometimes do, you can take out one of the rage spells and use a free spell instead. So with those spells, you're going to want to use them to get your giants and everything else, your actual Jiwi attack with your wizards, archers, giants, and wall breakers into the center of the base after your, your queen walk. So let's talk about your archer queen, what role your king actually plays in this attack strategy, and the extra 30 seconds post update that helps this strategy. So with this strategy, you have an extra 30 seconds post update, which is really beneficial because a queen walk is very time consuming. You have 3 minutes and 30 seconds to complete your attack. So that means you can queen walk for about a minute and then start your next attack, which is your main attack with the Jiwi, which is giants, wizards, archers, and wall breakers. So the reason why we bring 16 giants is because we have to basically soak up a whole bunch of damage on the adjacent side from where your queen was originally walking and taking out those buildings and defenses. The reason we have 44 archers, and it's not a lot of archers, so you have to be very careful with it. I just want to point out, point that out as a caution. Those 44 archers can go pretty quick when you're trying to funnel, first of all, your queen going in the, the right direction, and then funnel your giants going into the center of the base. With only four wall breakers, it's going to be very, very key that you place your wall breakers in a perfect manner where they're not getting hit by a mortar. So you wait until the mortar is actually fired and then you press your wall breakers and make sure to stay away from wizard towers because wizard towers will destroy them if your giants are right next to them. You have eight wizards to help you pack a punch right behind your archers and then you have the four healers which will help your archer queen out when you're actually queen walking and then halfway through your, your healers actually might go towards your giants and heal them up, which is perfectly fine because usually at that point, your archer queen isn't taking any more damage. So you basically have an extra heal spell, continuous heal spell, on your giants. So that heal spell in the beginning is there just for that sole purpose of making sure your giants don't die once they break into the first two compartments of the base. 
After you break into the first two compartments of the base using a heal spell and a rage spell, a rage spell is very important if you want to break into a base using your wall breakers. So if you want to use it that way, it's I, that's the way I do it and that's the way that, you know, I personally would recommend doing it. The next thing is a jump spell. So the jump spell gets you into multiple compartments after you've broken into the first two segments of the base. So that means you can take on a whole section at least one third of the base and your archer queen is already taking out one third of the base so then you only have one third left where there's actual walls to be worried about but by that time you pretty much have all the loot you have the dark elixir if you're going for just the dark elixir then you don't need to do all that but if you're going for dark elixir and loot then that would be the most beneficial thing to do also, along with your clan castle, if your queen is taking a whole bunch of damage or there's a lot of point defenses, this is one of the things that I wanted to talk about which, with which bases to look for. If you're looking for bases and they have a ton of point defenses, or it's even a Town Hall 10 or 11, I would definitely suggest using your clan castle troops, whether it be giants or a golem, to help tank in front of your archer queen. Because that means that your queen won't be taking as much damage and it'll help your queen a lot with a queen walk. And then you can put in your giants and everything else after she swung around a little bit going into the center of the base. But we'll show that example a little bit later. So as I was saying before, this attack strategy is very versatile. You can see in the first attack that I had 3,565 Dark Elixir from that raid, which is perfect because I was going for mostly Dark Elixir. But this attack right here has a ton of gold, ton of elixir, and quite a bit of dark elixir. It has 1,662. So there's four main reasons why I like this attack strategy, guys. The first one is it's so versatile when attacking bases. So you can attack a lot of different kind of bases with this queen walk strategy because it's so versatile. And the second one is depending on what you're going for, if you're just going for loot like gold and elixir, you can take out bases just for that, even with the queen. So it, you can go for Dark Elixir too in the center of the base if there's just, let's say, you know, 3.6k Dark Elixir, for example, in the center of the base and you just want to go for that. Or you can do both, where you can have the Super Queen uh, Queen walk around and take out the Collectors and then start your attack and go into the center of the base, where you can take out the rest of the Gold Elixir and Dark Elixir with your Giants and your second phase of the attack. The third thing is, it's kind of quick to train. Like, you don't have to worry about cooking up, uh, you know, lava hounds or golems or anything like that for those big attacks. But this is really quick and you can train this up, use your heal spells and rage spells and jump spells. I mean, you don't need all of them, but it's useful to actually have and bring along. The fourth thing is you can overlap it with clan wars. So if you get better at queen walking, which is one thing that I want to get better at, you can use it with your attack strategies for clan wars. So if you're going to do like a queen walk laloon, that's a pretty fun attack strategy to do if you have a base that lines up with that. So if your queen can actually swing around, take out two of the air defenses and the queen, then you have a very, very, very good chance of making your successful three star with that. So for the purpose of this strategy guide, after uploading all the clips that I wanted to use for this video on my video editor, and then I edited out the parts that I don't need, I had still over an hour of high quality clips that I was going to be using. So what I had to do is I had to cut those down, not put as many examples in, and then what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be splitting it in half. So I know the attention span of someone is probably about 20 minutes at max, so I'm going to do maybe 15 or 18 minute videos, but I'm going to be doing two of them. So I'm going to be explaining and showing each individual raid, whether it be there's a whole bunch of loot in the collectors, or there's a whole bunch of loot on the inside of the base in the storages, or if you're going for Dark Elixir or a combination of one of the other two whether it be, you know, they have a whole bunch of loot on the inside and outside in the collectors. So I want to show you examples and what I did for each one of those so that you guys can see individually and know how this strategy works like the back of your hand. Because I want to make this such a detailed guide, this is only going to be part one of the attack strategy. Part two is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to have different replays and I'm also going to be talking about the other stuff, including part one of the attack strategy. So I'm going to be talking about different things in this video than I am about the second video that I'm going to bring out. So definitely make sure to check that out because it's going to have information that I didn't put in here and different clips and replays. 
So for my second attack replay, we're going to be going against a Town Hall 10. This is one of the first Town Hall 10s that I went up against, so I was kind of testing the waters and seeing how the Queen Walk actually worked, especially with all the defenses that she's going to be taking on. So some people like to bring three healers with their Queen Walk. I like to bring four just because one of the healers is usually always going to die from, you know, an air defense or an archer tower or something along the lines of that but also because it can heal a little bit more and then once that healer dies I still have three healers to keep up my queen. With a Town Hall 10 though you have a lot more damage going to your queen especially since I only have a level 22 queen. So one of the things is if you have a higher level queen like a level 28 queen it's a little bit easier to take on these Town Hall level 10s. As you can see my queen is taking a ton of slash damage plus one point defense from that archer tower but that's enough to make me have to use my queen's ability really early. You want to save your queen's ability until the last second so she can queen walk a lot. I kind of panicked there. I threw down my giants and also threw down a rage spell on my queen when I didn't need it. There was Teslas on the outside so my giants swung around. And this is a kind of a fail rate at the moment. But I placed a jump spell down right over that uh, gold mine so I can get into the center of the base, kill these giants, and then take out that dark elixir. So one thing I want to note is that the inferno towers are off skew. So they're not on both sides of the town hall, which is great. And that's the ones you're going to want to look for because you can still have your queen shoot and kill the town hall which is going to have at least 500 something dark elixir depending on how much dark elixir that town hall 10 has so it's even though this was kind of a fail rate and i was testing the waters i still got 249,000 gold 169,000 elixir and 3k dark elixir with about i would say 35,000 gold 35,000 elixir and 180 something dark elixir for the bonus because i only got 49 percent i'm not really really worried about cups or anything like that so i didn't really care to try and get that 50 percent my queen is shooting on a wall didn't really care just there to farm so that was a pretty good raid just to get dark elixir so i can get up my royals so we're going to head back to base here and then we're going to do a live attack so i can show you firsthand how we're going to be doing this i have 110,000 dark elixir but I need 115,000 Dark Elixir to get my queen up to level 23. So I don't think we're going to get 4.3k Dark Elixir from this raid, but let's look and see if we can find a base with a lot of Dark Elixir or a lot of gold and Elixir just in general. And then I'll walk you through the steps of what I'm going to do, how I'm going to do it, <laughs> if I fail with something, and just see kind of how it goes. But I'm probably going to cut the video here, and then I'll get back to you when I find a base. So I think I can take on this base. I'm not 100% sure. There might be Teslas or something along here. So what I'm going to do, there's a lot of point defenses and a lot of splash damage over here. I'm going to, let's see. As I told you, I'm not a like an expert with Queen Walk. So let's see, put in a giant right here and two wizards to make sure she doesn't go that direction. I probably should have used a couple of archers instead. And I'm going to want her to come over to this direction where she can help f funnel everything in. And unfortunately, she's going to take a ton of damage. So what I'll have to do is I'll have to start on this side. Let's see if I can get them in here. Use a rage spell. Use a couple of wall breakers. Get everyone inside. Use wizards. A golem. Jump spell. Oh, that's an enemy golem. Whoops. And then funnel in some archers. Use a rage. Use a heal. Some more on this side. See if I can get some more in the center right here. This is going pretty well. Um, fortunately, we don't have the dark elixir yet, but that'll be there soon. There's a whole bunch of Teslas in front of this guy's base. I guess he wasn't expecting to go the opposite direction. That golem really didn't do too much for me. I wish it would have gone on the other side. But uh, this is looking all right. We have the queen shooting at the town hall. We got a lot of his loot, and uh, I still have a couple healers on my queen. 
it's hard when you're doing a live raid. It's a it's a lot different to attack, you know, especially when you're doing a Town Hall 10 versus a Town Hall 9. Uh, not the best at that. So this was a pretty successful raid, I think. My queen is alive. Uh, we have a golem on the left side, which is helping my archers break through that wall. My queen is taking out a whole bunch of those Teslas and this wizard tower. Hopefully she's not going to die. It looks like she's taking... Um, or maybe she's staying... No, she's definitely going down a little bit more than my healers can heal, which is not good. But hopefully after these archers come out and the golem breaks into a couple of pieces, he'll go in front, hopefully, and take the brute force of these of this Tesla, which it doesn't look like is happening, and my queen's going to go down, unfortunately. But let's see here. Is there anything else? Nah. I think we got everything else. We got 70%, so I think that'll be enough. I'm not sure if I want to let this play out or not. Nah, it'll be fine. So, we got 3,000 Dark Elixir, 239,000 gold, 224,000 Elixir, and 70,000 gold, 70,000 Elixir, and 320 Dark Elixir. So that's pretty good. Um, I'm not 100% sure on how much this army costs, especially using all of the spells, but, you know, one thing is... I'm already pretty much maxed. I have everything maxed. I just need to upgrade my walls and my king and queen. But I know that I'm going to be upgrading my king and queen way more than I'm going to be upgrading my walls because I'm going to upgrade my walls before my king and queen get to max. And I want to get all of my walls to uh, level 10 it is. Yeah, level 10. So that was a pretty successful raid. It was a Town Hall 10, but it didn't have Inferno Towers. It was a pretty new Town Hall 10, but it was still a very good raid with 3k Dark Elixir plus the bonus and everything else. As I was saying earlier, the Giants, Pekka, Wizards, Witches, Valks, and Golems are great things to have in your clan castle. So if you want to get that stuff, just request it and it'll help out a ton with your raids. As you can tell, my queen is level 22 and we are 869 Dark Elixir from getting hurt at level 23. My king is level 23, I believe, and going up to level 24. So I need to get my queen up a little bit more. I just wanted to upgrade my king. Um, I don't know why I forget the reason, but I needed my queen. I think it was for a queen walk in a war or something like that. So th this is the end of this video, but make sure to check Part two in this strategy is going to have a whole bunch of stuff, a lot more in detail with steps in the strategy, um, what your king's role is, and a whole bunch of other clips that I'm going to be explaining a lot more in detail with different stuff added in. So it's going to be very helpful and you should definitely check out that video once I post it. Part two is going to have new information, detailed driven steps for the attack strategy, different raid examples, and much, much more. But that's it for the video guys, if you enjoyed it, smash that like button, share this with your friends and clanmates, and as always, make sure to be subscribed. PEACE!